Apollo version 4 was recently released and it introduced many breaking changes as compared to earlier versions. Apollo has a history of bringing in breaking changes with every major release. Is it finally time to move on from using Apollo Server as your framework for building GraphQL APIs? In this video, I'll be showing these breaking changes. I also will be showing how you can migrate to the latest version of Apollo. But then comes the question, is it finally time to move on and what will be the alternatives? In this video, I'll be going over these alternatives as well. Before looking at all the breaking changes of Apollo Server version 4, let's try and understand why people are so frustrated with Apollo about this new release. To find out, let's move over to Reddit, where I found a thread of someone that is really frustrated with this latest move of Apollo. Because together with Apollo Server version 4, they also announced that they will be deprecating Apollo Server version 2 and version 3, while they aren't even one year old. On the Apollo documentation website, you can see that Apollo Server 2 is officially deprecated with an end of life scheduled for October 2023. If we would go to version 3, we can find the same thing. It's also deprecated with an end of life scheduled for the same date, meaning that one year or actually less than one year from now, you no longer get support for these Apollo Server versions. In this Reddit thread, you can also find alternatives to using Apollo Server. And at the end of this video, we also will be discussing some of these alternatives more in depth. So I would really advise you to have a look at this Reddit thread if you're currently using Apollo Server version 3. Together with the release of Apollo Server version 4, Apollo has also brought out a migration guide. And if you would go to this migration guide, you can find all the information about Apollo Server 4. So if you are building something with Apollo, I will definitely recommend you going to this page and see what the changes might mean for you. They also provide a link to the complete change log and you can see all the changes they made directly on GitHub in their change log. If you scroll, the biggest change they introduced is the new at Apollo slash server package. And if you look at how this package is structured, it's very similar to what they've done with Apollo client a couple years back. So everything is in the namespace at Apollo now. So you have at Apollo slash client in the same way they also have at Apollo slash server right now. So let's go to the biggest change. If you look at this flowchart, it's a flowchart that was created by them. It asks you some questions. So are you using the Apollo server package? Most people that are developing Apollo APIs use, are using the Apollo server package. Meaning that if you're still using the Apollo server package, integration is kind of easy. In this VS Code project, you can see a example of an Apollo server setup. So we have Apollo server, which we're importing from the old version three. Then we have our schema, we have our resolvers, and then we have our REST data source. You basically, you set up the server, you define the, where your schema is, where your resolvers are, you add some context and you add a link to the data sources because maybe you're using these REST data sources to efficiently query REST services that you're using in your Apollo server. And then of course you need to get the server up and running by using server.listen. So if you're migrating from this setup to Apollo uh, version four, there are some changes you need to make. The biggest change is that you need to import two new libraries. These libraries are Apollo Server from the new namespace library and also Apollo Startalone Server. So Apollo Startalone Server is basically replacing what you see down here with server.listen. So let me see how this would refactor. We, of course, we would need to keep our schema and our resolvers, which is perfectly fine. Didn't make any changes to that just yet. And then this whole setup, we can basically delete it because the data sources and the context, they will be moved on differently. So what we do instead, we use start alone server, which will create a server based on uh, your Apollo server definition. And then you would pass this server directly to the standalone server right here. And your context is being set. And you can also add your data sources. So the data source that you're linking directly in context instead of having to add them as a separate object. So this all looks very nice. I mean, not much has changed if you are using Apollo Server. So you could just save this and things should be working. But if you go back to the flowchart in the migration guide, you can see that if you aren't using Apollo Server, or you maybe are using Apollo Server Express, you would need to use a Express middleware function, whatever that might be. So they introduced a new function that allows you to write middleware to keep using Express. But they dropped support for community integrations. 
So if you're using a different web framework than Express or Apollo's own server to run your GraphQL API, you're basically screwed and you need to wait for more community support because Apollo decides to no longer support all the community rate integrations. Koa, Lambda Functions, Micro, Cloud Functions, Cloudflare, and also for Azure. So if you are building with any of these frameworks, you're basically screwed. You need to move away from Apollo Server or you will be up for a tough migration path. So which web framework are you using to build GraphQL APIs using Apollo Server? Moving back to the migration guide, you can see they also made changes to data sources, which as similar to Apollo Server, the updates to Apollo Server version four, if you are using all the built-in features from Apollo, it's pretty easy to migrate. Heading back to VS Code, we already saw that instead of passing the data sources as a standalone object, we're passing it inside the context. If we would go to our data, so to our data sources file, which is right this one, you could see I made some resolvers or actually some data sources that are using the SpaceX API. In here, you can see we're using the old Apollo data source library, and this actually has been changed as well. So similar to uh, Apollo Server and Apollo Client, it is now living under the namespace of Apollo Server. So instead of importing it like this, we have a new import that looks like this. So we're using data source Rust under the namespace at Apollo. In here, not much has changed. Uh, it slightly changed how to get the request headers, which makes sense because now data sources is part of context instead of a separate object. So going forward, not much has changed here at all. So if you are in for, if you are using REST data sources, it's a pretty easy migration. But here comes the tricky part because Apollo, similarly to how they've done for the web frameworks to run your GraphQL server on, they also make changes to the supported data sources. If we're heading back to the migration guide, you can find the link to getting more information about the changes to data sources. So this will bring you to, bring you to the general docs overview for data sources. And here we can actually see that in Apollo Server 4, they made some changes and they actually decided to deprecate all these other data sources that are into REST data source. So if you're building with SQL by using the ConnectJS ORM, if you're using MongoDB, if you're using Cosmos from Azure, or you're using Cloud Firestore, to connect your GraphQL API to your data source, you're basically screwed. You need to move away from Apollo or you need to wait for a community supported integration. So similar to the changes they made to allowing you to run the server over a different web framework, they also make changes to the data sources you're allowed to connect through Apollo's supported integrations. So now you're again up for the community. So the community should create a supported integration for any of these data sources that you were using with Apollo server version three. If we head back to VS Code, you can see everything is fine if you're using the libraries that are under the Ad Apollo namespace. But for example, if you're still relying on MongoDB and you're using Apollo version three, there's no way to upgrade. So if this will be your data source that you're connecting, you're basically getting stuck until someone will create an Apollo data source connection under the, under the namespace at Apollo. So hopefully Apollo will make any of these integrations available later on, or maybe the community can help creating these libraries. But then again, should you be creating integrations for a server framework that might be dead after all? But here comes the million dollar question. Should you be moving away from Apollo server? Now they have released version four with all these breaking changes. You already saw that they dropped support for community integrations. So if you're using a different web framework than Express or Apollo's own server, to run your GraphQL API, you're basically screwed and you need to wait for more community support because Apollo decides to no longer support all the community rate integrations. And they're doing the same for data sources. As you saw, they stripped away support for every data source except for REST. So they're still maintaining the REST data source, meaning that if you are connecting REST APIs in your Apollo server, it's easy to migrate. But if you are connecting anything else, any of the community run integrations, you might have to wait for a community integration or you should build one yourself. And if you thought Apollo was done making breaking changes to Apollo server, you're wrong. I found a Reddit thread with a comment from the Apollo server tech lead. And he actually said they are making breaking changes and for them it's all fine because basically they're saying Apollo has been under serious technical debt for a long time. If you read through the comments, you can find why. 
it was messy code, stuff was hard coded, and it was really hard for them to make changes. So if you were using Apollo Server all this time, you're basically building on technical depth without even knowing. And something else I see here, so they're very optimistic about the changes they made, which I hope they are, because otherwise it wouldn't make sense to make all these changes at all. But if you scroll down a bit, you can actually see that they're expecting to release Apollo Server version 4 in the spring, and it will have backwards incompatible changes. Meaning that if you decide to make changes for Apollo Server version 4, in spring already you can find Apollo Server version 5, which might have even more breaking changes. So what alternatives do you have to move away from Apollo Server? Scrolling through this Reddit thread, I found multiple examples of how to replace Apollo Server. So let's have a look at some of them. There are different ways to build GraphQL APIs, as you might know. The biggest and most used way to build GraphQL APIs is schema first, and it's the same what Apollo Server does. It means you define your GraphQL schema, you write your resolvers, and then you create a GraphQL API from the schema and the resolvers. If you'd like to find another schema first approach, I really advise you to have a look at Mercurius. If you look at the Reddit thread from the Apollo Server tech lead, he actually advises you to consider using Mercurius as an alternative to Apollo Server. Also, if you're looking for a code first or resolver first approach, meaning that you would create your resolvers and based on the resolvers, you generate a GraphQL schema, which you can then expose as a GraphQL API, I really advise you to have a look at Type GraphQL. So Type GraphQL is a library that allows you to build type safe GraphQL APIs using TypeScript. And finally, if you consider moving away from building your own GraphQL APIs at all, you should have a look at StepSend. I might be a bit biased here as I actually work with StepSend, but it's a very cool platform to build your GraphQL APIs for every data source without writing any code at all. I really hope this guide was useful for you to decide whether or not to continue using Apollo Server. We went to all the breaking changes and how you can fix them when moving to Apollo Server version four. I also showed you a comment from the Apollo Server tech lead explaining why they made all these breaking changes and that there are more breaking changes to come. So with the end of life inside for Apollo Server version three, which is at the end of next year, you might have to move away already. So you can either decide to go for Apollo Server version four fix the breaking changes and await a new breaking change in spring of next year. Or you might have to choose any of the alternatives I mentioned. So whatever you decide, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you stay updated when I shoot new videos on how to build GraphQL APIs.